So I have a clad wheel here. Now this wheel actually has, has plastic cladding all around the face of it, including around the center bore here. So I'm not going to want to clamp down against that plastic cladding with the, with the standard center clamp. What I'll do is I'll just place a tire on the, the, the machine, oriented normally, this isn't a reverse wheel, but then I'll clamp from the top down using, using my flange plate. So again, I have a five lug wheel here, but what I'll need to do is remove one of the pins to make room for the traction pin that's in the, the platen. And have that engaged and locked down. And I'll clamp directly against the face of this flange plate uh, using my quick clamp. So I can just knock my cone off there. And clamp normally. And once I have the, the wheel clamped, changing the tire really is, has no special procedures. I can go ahead and change this tire using the normal procedure. All right, so let's talk about clamping this 19.5 assembly here. Of course, I'll need my 19.5 kit that starts with this adapter plate here. Now, this adapter plate has a single hole in it here that I'll need to line up with the traction pin in the platen. So I'll go ahead and just line that up, make sure it sits down flat. These 19.5s a lot of times have a, a pretty deep offset, so I'm just going to go ahead and right off the bat and move my plat into the highest position. They tend to sit kind of low on the machine. Of course, these 19.5s are very, very heavy. I'm going to want to make use of that nice wheel lift and put in almost no effort into, into lifting this thing into, uh, onto the machine. So there are multiple holes in this adapter plate here to line up with different bolt patterns on the uh, for the wheel. So I'll just rotate the wheel just a little bit just to line up one of those threaded holes up with a lug hole in the wheel. And I've got a, a, a knurled traction pin here that I'll just go ahead and thread into place through one of those lug holes. At that point I'm ready to go ahead and clamp uh, and of course that center bore is so large I need this aluminum cone. So I'll make sure that aluminum cone's uh, engaged at all four corners here and clamp from the top. Tighten it down. Now I'm ready to go ahead and service this tire using a normal mode. So let's talk about some special clamping cases here for some dually wheels. Um, this particular wheel has a relatively small barrel that actually is so small that it, it bottoms out on the platen before it can actually sit flush on the platen. So there's a couple different ways we can clamp this wheel depending on what kit we have available. Um, th the first thing I'm going to want to do, or the first piece I'll use, is actually from the 19.5 kit. So I'll put down my aluminum cone with the cone facing up and then the pin extension that comes with that 19.5 kit. I've got my platen raised up to the highest position of course because a lot of times these, these wheels have a, a relatively deep offset and they sit fairly low on the machine. So that taper on the cone is small enough to fit inside this, this center bore, this barrel. Now I'm ready to clamp from the top and I'll need to use my steel cone that came with the machine and clamp against that from the top. So that's one method you can use to clamp this wheel. Uh, now I'm ready to go ahead and change this tire normally. All right, so the second method to clamp this wheel is actually to use the flange plate. Um, I've got my platen set to the highest position and I'm going to go ahead and put my, my flange plate on almost like I'd be clamping a reverse wheel, but I'm not going to clamp this wheel in reverse since it's not a reverse type drop center. I'll bring my wheel into position here. Of course, line up one of my, uh, line up my studs. And then I'm ready to go ahead and clamp normally from the top. My, my standard cone is actually large enough in diameter to clamp this from the top. So I'll just clamp it normally and uh, I'm ready with the wheel clamp to go ahead and change this tire using the normal procedure. Okay, so let's talk about another special case scenario here with a, another steel dually wheel with a particularly large bolt pattern. So again, there's a couple different ways I can approach this depending on which kit I have. I'm actually going to this time use, again, the, the clamping cone out of the 19.5 kit. I'm going to use that aluminum cone again. Um, but instead of lining the traction pin up with one of the, the bolt holes, I'm actually going to line that traction pin up. I'm just going to place it against the center bore of the wheel here. Sort of center everything up by eye. And then place that, that clamping cone down from the top. And as you can see in all four corners here, I've got nice taper engagement here with the wheel. 
And with the traction pin wedged between the wheel and the cone, I've also got a really nice traction point there. So I'll go ahead and clamp normally from the top. Keep it just a little bit of a shake here to center everything up. And now change the tire using a normal procedure. All right, so the second method to clamp this wheel is actually to use the flange plate again. And again, I'll place my flange plate down on the platen, almost like I'd be clamping in reverse, but I'm not actually going to clamp this uh, in reverse. The flange plate travels out plenty far enough to, to reach this, even this large center bolt pattern. So I'll drop my wheel down. I am going to need to use my large uh, steel cone since the center bore is so large. I'll place that down and go ahead and clamp normally then from the top. Now with that wheel secured, I can go ahead and change this tire using the normal procedure.